guys, welcome back. Today I'm going to read The Spooky Express Toronto, written by Eric James. We were out trick or treating, my best friend and I, when we saw a huge shape swooping down from the sky. It circled around us on train tracks of mist. Then it came to a stop, and its large pistons hissed. What a marvelous train! Engine black as the night. All its carriages glowed with a ghostly green light. And we both held our breath when its loud whistle blew. For the sound that it made was a ghastly woo The door opened wide. A conductor appeared with a cheery old smile that was not to be feared. He said, Spooky Express, hop aboard, take a ride. How exciting, we thought, and we climbed up inside. We looked all around. What a wonderful sight. We saw ghosts to our left. We saw ghouls to our right. There were mummies in tatters, and witches in hats, and ogres, and werewolves, a vampire, bats. There were big trolls from Midtown that towered in size, and aliens from Downsville with bright, bulging eyes. A voice on the speaker said, Please hold tight! Then the train gave a lurch and launched into the night. We glided along through a dark, stormy sky, and we watched as the buildings of North York whizzed by. We zipped over harbor front, saw its bright lights. We glimpsed Octobico from dizzy heights. The ride was fantastic, but where were we going? We sped ever onward with no signs of slowing. Lake Ontario next, said the train's engineer. Make room for the creatures who will swim aboard here. Splash! And just as he said it, he slammed on the brakes and we fell through the air, splash into the lake. We soon left the lake for another strange stop. Up Canada's trust tower on the side near the top. And on top of the bluffs where the big orgers dwell. Then down in the old sewers, oh, the sewer folks smell. As we raced to our next stop, the train turned too fast. And I saw through the window a pumpkin whiz past. The ghost started howling. What happened? I said. We're doomed, cried a witch. That's the engineer's head. If the engineer's headless, he can't steer the train. For his head's where he keeps both his eyes and his brain. He yanked levers forward. He jerked levers back. The train started wobbling all over the track. We swerved around buildings. We darted past trees. The speed of the turns made us weak at the knees. While everyone panicked, I stood up and said, with the help of some friends, we can go get that head. Miss Witch, I said calmly. Your broom, if I may. Miss Spider, Miss Drain, let's go save the day. The engineer's head was in Sunny Brook Park. Miss Dragon, I said, will you light up the dark? It's there, said my friend. It's directly below, but it's down in the mud, and it's stuck there. Oh, no! I turned to Miss Spider. Please spin us some thread. I've got an idea. We will lasso that head. We trolled it around, threw it over the top, and we pulled the head free with a squelch and a 
pop! Then back we all flew through the wind and the rain with the pumpkin containing the engineer's brain. With his head in our hand, we jumped back on the train, and we stuck his head into his shoulders again. He pulled a few levers. The ghost train slowed down. Do you know where we were? We were back in our town. The ghost started howling, this time with delight, and the gnomes hugged an alien. A little too tight. The wizard shot sparks that were orange and green, and they cried, "Well done, children! You saved Halloween." We'd be stuck on this train had you not been so daring. But now we can stop in each town and go scaring. We jumped off the train, none the worse for our fright. This had been certainly been. The best Halloween night. The train started moving. Its large piston hissed. It circled around us on train tracks of mist. It launched itself skyward. Its loud whistle blew, and the sound that it made was a friendly "hoo happy Halloween." Thanks for watching. Bye.